This is how to do unrelated t-tests in R. Remember what we have in an unrelated t-test. We have two conditions, condition A and condition B, and each person in condition A gets some sort of a score or some sort of evaluation or some sort of number assigned. Each person in the other condition, condition B, gets some sort of number assigned to them. So the first thing to do is to set up your comma-separated value file. The first column in your comma separated value file is going to tell which condition a person belonged to, and the second column is going to tell their score. Now, if this condition is something like gender, you probably want to use gender as your heading. Use something that's meaningful. For the moment, we're going to just use condition and score, and let's call our conditions A and B. Again, you might want to call male or female. You might want to have something like caffeinated or decaffeinated, depending on what your conditions are. Make it meaningful. So let's have condition A, a score of 23. Next person is also in condition A with a score of 14. Then we had someone in condition B who scored 33. Someone in condition A who scored 35. Condition B scored a 38. B 30. B 24. Condition A had a 30. Condition A had a 25. Condition B had 18. And condition A had 29 and one more person from condition A who had a score of 30. Whenever you're doing a comma separated value file with R, make sure that you press enter after the last line. Otherwise, R will complain that you haven't completed your last line. Because these are unrelated t tests, there's no need for the number of people in condition A to be the same as the number of people in condition B. And then we're going to save this file. And for the moment, we're going to put in our ever popular temp folder and we're going to call it unrelated.csv because this is a generic example. You'll probably want to name it something that has to do with the experiment or observation that you're working with. Once we have the file we can go into R. We can then set our working directory to C colon slash temp and you can use a forward slash or you can use two backslashes. Both of them work perfectly well. And now we're going to say D for our data frame, and we're going to read our CSV file, unrelated.csv. We can do the names of D, which will give us our column headings. And if you want to check that the data is really there, you can look at the first three rows or so of your data frame. And sure enough, there's our data. At this point, we're going to have to separate the A's from the B's. So let's just um, call it instead of a and B, again, because this is generic. If it were gender, you'd probably want to group them as male and female. So condition A is the score column where the condition is equal to the letter A. And let's check to see that A has something in it. B is the score column where the condition column is equal to the letter B. Let's look at the B column. And as you can tell, we have different numbers of people. You can tell how many people are in each condition by using the length function. So the length of A tells me there are seven people in condition A, and there are five people in condition B. Now, the question is, is this ordinal data or is it interval data? If it's interval data, then we need to do a standard t-test. So we're going to say t-test, and we're going to test A against B. This time we're going to say paired equals F, or false, because this is not paired data. And to make sure that the degrees of freedom comes out as an integer, we're going to presume that the underlying variances of the two groups are equal. And here's what we come up with. The T is negative 0.4819, degrees of freedom is 10, and our p-value is 0.64, which means that there is absolutely no effect going on here. Again, this is if we have interval data. If we had ordinal data, we couldn't use a t-test. Instead, we'd have to use the Wilcoxon t-test. And so we'd say Wilcox test A against B. This time, again, paired equals false. And we're going to say exact equals false. This gives us um, the w value of 14 and a probability value, again, not significant. This is the same as a Mann-Whitney u-test when you are doing unrelated samples testing for differences. For the Mann-Whitney u-test, you have to pr 
provide the number of points that each group got. This W is 14 gives the number of points for group B. When we want to know the number of points for group A, we have to do another Wilcox test of B against A. Again, paired equals false and exact equals false. And we get a W of 21, same probability. The Mann-Whitney U test that you report is going to be the lesser of those two values because 14 is less than 21. You're going to say that group A had 14, uh, excuse me, 21 points and group B had 14 points. And that's how you do an unrelated samples test for differences in mean.